finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict, and we're going to take a look at this 1965 Lincoln Continental Convertible that's for sale right now. We're going to also look at eBay. First, we're going to go through a couple of high-level overview items that I found to help streamline this listing review. So basically, the sale details of this is the 65 Lincoln Convertible. Uh, it has a multi-year restoration, so they're claiming five-year restoration. Asking price, 177000 give or take, with a make-and-offer option, appears to be located in Dallas, Fort Worth area. The VIN, I did copy from eBay. I want to break this down. So the five, so that first digit, that's the year, of course, 65. The second digit, Y, is the assembly plant. So that's Wixom, Michigan. All of these uh, 60s Lincolns were uh, manufactured, uh, assembled, if you will, at uh, Wixom. Uh, digits three and four are going to be the body style. So basically, this is a convertible, so you see eight, six. The N is a Nancy engine code. Of course, that's the 430. Uh, the uh, digits six through 11, so it starts with a four and ends with the one. That's basically the consecutive unit number. And uh, with this one being 28,537, that means it was the 28,537th made. You might scratch your head and go, I didn't think they made that many of these cars. Well, if you look here, the sedan, of course, just to reinforce, 36,824. Convertibles, 3356. And then the limousine, 50 of those. So there were 40,230 total made for that model year. Of course, this was the 28th, just under the 29,000 made. So in case you've ever wanted to know, I've hinted at that before. Um, and kind of broken it down, but that's kind of the breakdown there. One thing that boggles my mind when I look at some of these listing reviews is they usually just, some of these guys just copy and paste a big blah of information. I like to point things out, so we're going to see this in a minute. But what I did was I copied and pasted it and basically just kind of I want to highlight something here. I'm not sure why, even with a high-end sale, that they don't take the time just to kind of streamline the information. But basically, they do state it was a five-year restoration in 2018. They claim that there's 100 miles, which would be unreal, only uh, or on this car since the restoration. Highlander green with beige top, black interior. So the key details, what I'm going to show you here is from this AC, this is all your normal copy-paste stuff. Power steering, power brakes, power windows, antenna, bucket seats, which actually it states they're technically not buckets. We'll see that. This first bullet point is really the information that you'd be looking for. I bolded all of this information. This is the typical you know, Wikipedia copy paste information that really tells you nothing about this five-year restoration. And then after the bolded information, which again, is probably a little tough to see depending on how you're viewing this, um, they go back into some of the same information uh, that they had uh, listed above. Really just something I think sellers, and especially even these high-end guys, they, they need to spend a little bit more time, in my opinion, to bullet point or detail out this information. Again, some of it I took off at the top. We'll see when we look at the listing, and um, I cleaned it up a little bit to try to break it down. So ODB's listing uh, review here, of course, you guys, some of you have been back. If you haven't, uh, please consider subscribing if it's your first time here. The positives, right? So high level, this is going to help streamline this review. You basically have lots of photos. The paint looks awesome. Unique color, I was going to say, you know, highly sought after color. I want to say unique because it's a little bit different. You know, typically black is what everyone wants. Maybe, you know, red if you're a red fan, maybe blue if you're blue, uh, turquoise and those type of things. But it is a unique color. The interior also looks amazing. Okay, the challenges that I have with this list and review that we're going to see in a moment is there's a lack of restoration photos documenting the process. Now, granted, they may not have been involved in the five-year restoration, but if their client 
you know, paid for this restoration, you know, he or she, in my opinion, should be able to produce some photos to document that. That's only going to help elevate the price. And you're going to see in a moment, you know, the asking price is seventy five to 77000 more than the concourse price right now, according to Haggerty. There's no photos inside the trunk. There's no video of the top or windows working. My listing suggestions would be we need two to five videos. If this was your car and you were looking to sell it, we need videos. You can post them to YouTube. You can link over to them. And when you're done with your listing, you can always delete them if you don't want them out there. But we need videos to highlight key items that the seller really should be asking Windows and top working, including the rear auto drops. Walk around the car. You're going to see this amazing facility they have. Put it on a lift. Show underneath the car. Uh, show us some running, driving, and stopping uh, video as well. Photos showcasing the restoration. Again, I kind of mentioned that. And then photos of the VIN plate to see the factory color and things such as that. Now, the listing review, uh, we're getting ready to jump into it now, so I appreciate you guys kind of uh, bearing with me through that information. You're going to see, I just took this screenshot a moment ago, basically the concourse price right now is 103000 excellent condition, seventy two four, and then the good condition, that price continues to creep up. It's at 53600 That's, of course, you can see there a 12, almost 13% increase. The excellent condition has has dropped a little bit. I think just the market, we've seen a little bit of fluctuation. What I'm going to be curious about is if you've listened to the recent Lincoln Attic podcast, episode 28, I talk about a few cars, custom cars, they're going to be going to auction this month at Barrett-Jackson. I think that will kind of give us a barometer of what we're looking at for the, for the uh, near future. Now, I'm going to jump back to the beginning here. I'm going to click the link, and we're going to jump over to eBay. So you can see here 176,000, let's call it 177K. When you scroll down, just a blob of information. Again, doesn't make it easy to kind of digest and kind of go through. But what I did was I, when I copied and pasted it, some of this information was your, you know, things that are just the standard, really not um, features. They do mention Vogue white walls. And I think down here, uh, again, a repeat of the information. So it kind of is just an easy copy paste why they wouldn't spend a little bit more time to really document this and bullet point it is something I just don't understand, uh, especially for a high end build. They do include the VIN number. So this is where I copied it from. Uh, again, probably copy paste from another program because again, it doesn't have these zeros in front of it. This is the main uh, VIN number that uh, that I dissected, if you will. We do see here, uh, welcome to Dallas Fort Worth. And I've seen this seller before. I assume that's where the car is located. Uh, when we click here, you cannot make the photos bigger. And typically, as I've said before, you can scroll down and normally see the larger version. Not in this case. You have to click here, the full-size photos. It will open. Um, and what we're going to see is the 65 Lincoln Continental convertible. You got your front three-quarter shots here. Paint looks really nice. You know, all these photos are taken 10, 15 feet away, I'd say, give or take. Uh, one thing, again, that I'm going to continue to reinforce is the paint looks really, really nice on this car. So it gives it a very, very nice uh, presentation in terms of the photos. You've got your standard uh, white wall there, which a lot of folks want, that non-wide white wall. They want that factory look, and that's what you're getting here. Uh, you can see the kind of the money shot, so to speak, with the rear suicide doors open. Uh, bumper looks really nice. Again, I mean, everything we're seeing from a presentation standpoint really says, hey, this this was a nicely done car. Kind of scrolling through these a little quick. Again, you can go back and check this out because it's on eBay right now. We get down to around this area. It looks like obviously a newer top because that back window looks real nice and clean. Uh, the top down here, again, you get an opportunity to see the interior. What I noticed here is I do believe these seat belts are the correct rear seat belts for 65. Typically, guys would maybe take the fronts out of another parts car, or I do believe in 65 there was the option for the rear seat belts. Ironically enough, I was just talking to Chris Dunn about that this past weekend before I ever did uh, this review, and Chris, of course, owns Lincoln Land. 
Uh, again, you're looking here. You can see it has the automatic headlight dimmer, the AM FM radio they mentioned. They did mention bucket seats, and I do believe that's just – uh, a little confusion because it does have the armrest, but again, just to be clear, this is a bench seat. The dash looks fantastic. I've taken these apart a couple of times. Um, not too, too difficult, but you know, typically to get them all back together and nice and clean and nice and neat, uh, not an easy task, you know, especially for someone that may not work on Lincolns a lot. Uh, again, we're, what we're seeing here is super nice interior. We get to the MEL 430, which is Mercury Etzel Lincoln. They ran this engine from uh, 58 to 65. And um, we can see here, if we zoom in a little bit, uh, it's got the muffler. So this is a factory item uh, for the air condition. Typically, when you do the upgrade, uh, a lot of times, you know, this could just be removed. It's really kind of unnecessary. But when you look at this, very, very nice presentation. You can tell it's been detailed. We do see the single reservoir, uh, a master cylinder. So I've talked at links about really this should be upgraded to a dual. And believe it or not, the LCOC, the Lincoln Continental Owners Club, they do not take points off for this. So those guys that are going for that 100-point inspection, so to speak, and, and trying to you know win those awards, uh, they're not uh, you know taken uh, – your points aren't removed because of a dual reservoir. Of course, the single was factory, but really I've talked about – you really should change that out. You got the three-port uh, fuel pump, which is fantastic. You got some new insulation, which is available for underneath the hood. Uh, again, super clean, a couple different angles. And we get down here, and you think it's the end, and it's not. So there are some more photos. There's a couple of ads there, of course, for their business. We see that they changed out the license plate, which is typical uh, for um, you know someone you know selling one of these or selling a car in, in their uh, facility. Um, looking in here, everything looks really good. The carpet, not sure if it's original, but it does have the heel pad. It's hard to tell with the photos that they took. You can kind of start to see it looks a little grainy here. Uh, if this was a Jim Wallace carpet kit, it would have this heel pad in, but it's, it's hard to tell if this is the factory heel pad. But uh, it's nicer, in my opinion, than some of the other kits out there where they don't put that in there. So if you, if you want it to look factory, you want the heel pad. Uh, inside the doors, everything looks good. But again, this looks like a black and white photo almost to a certain extent. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe this is green. Maybe this is black. But you can see here the green and the black. Kind of the difference. 65, this is the correct seat pattern for those seats. And we're just kind of getting towards the end. Again, a lot of photos, which is fantastic, and I gave them some praise for that. Uh, if I was looking to buy a car and kind of getting a bird's eye view of it, the more photos, the better. Uh, you can even see here kind of on the deck lid how, look, how nice everything looks. All of this uh, bright work, so to speak, looks great, and the bumper ends look fantastic. Uh, this is the typical look what you're going to get. I mean, this one looks in really nice condition, but that's the typical look of a hood ornament. We're back to some of the kind of the repetition of the photos. It does look like, again, down here, I can see the different hardware that was changed out. More than likely, these are all new gaskets. You would think with the five-year restoration, um, that term is often thrown around a lot. A full, a quote, full restoration. It doesn't always mean one was done. Uh, this one certainly looks great. Uh, you can see here these clamps. These are more the factory style, which is great. Um, I'm not a fan of these clamps. That could be annoying, but... For an originality uh, piece, if you will, um, these look very good. That's what was there. And um, we haven't talked about this a lot, but the California cars, um, if this was a California car, we assume that it was, um, they would have had this extra vent here. So I haven't talked about that a lot. Now, because there's not a photo of the VIN plate, we don't know the destination sales office. What's the DSO? I've talked about that a little bit. I have a 65 with a DSO from the Los Angeles area. If this was a DSO from California, it would help to drive that price a little bit because typically it's a nicer climate, right? There's not the rust belt, if you will. And the California cars had the extra emission. So if you ever see this, it's either one, a California car, or two, someone has either 
went after getting this part or three we've seen some cars before where they just end up with an air cleaner that has this and then they end up with this cap and it helped just to kind of burn a little extra oil um if you will don't want to get into that whole explanation right now but bottom line is this was a california item for cars that were sold in california you can see it has the uh wheel covers also known as the hubcaps and that's where it stops so in this video i I basically wanted to show you this is a very nice car. Okay, don't get me wrong. Unfortunately, we don't see in the trunk. We don't know if the auto drops are working for the rear windows. We don't know how well the windows work. If we had a video showing them go up and down, are they slow? Um, do they all function? We assume that they do. But really, even in these photos, we don't see a photo of the windows up at all. I have seen real nice cars uh, sell and the per, the the new person up to, you know takes ownership of the car and the windows don't work. No one wants to cruise in a convertible with the windows stuck up, or potentially with the windows stuck down. Um, but again, with a five year restoration, I know you're thinking, hey, we can assume some of this, and absolutely. But ask yourself this: if they're a high end seller, why wouldn't they just take the time to go the extra mile? These guys probably sell millions of dollars worth of cars every year. It just kind of is baffling to me on why they wouldn't uh, break down this description a little bit more cleanly um, and provide more photos, including in the, the, the deck lid. Um, if I was looking to potentially have someone go look at this car for me, I'd ask them to get underneath it, uh, use a small flashlight, take a look, you know, see if this car has ever had any damage, um, see if there's any welds underneath it, you know, in terms of like front end damage and things like that. And I know you're, you're thinking, Hey, you know, Jason, this is a, this is a high end restoration. Absolutely. But you got to remember too, sometimes these, these places will obtain or acquire a car that was badly damaged, right? And they get it for a good deal. And then they're able to come back and do a full restoration. And this car looks amazing and it might drive totally straight down the road. But again, if we look over here, let me go back here. If we look over here at the price guide, we know that a concourse uh, car right now is about a hundred grand, give or take. If it's got AC, again, Haggerty's very clear that typically is going to raise your value about 10%. Let's call it 110 grand. You're still sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 higher than that. Now, granted, it is a buy now, or, or excuse me, make an offer. So you could easily say 120, they might come back 150. Don't really know um, how that would potentially go. But I think my takeaway on this is. Yes, this looks really nice, and if you had the money, potentially a great buy, but always go look at these cars or have someone go look at it, even if you had the cash and you said, hey, I want my dream car. This car looks fantastic in photos, okay, and it very very well may uh, be a great, fantastic car, but you want to have someone look at it or you need to look at it, get your eyes on it, and make sure that all the stuff that we're not seeing – that you're able to 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 kind of digest and take a look at it. Lastly, um, there's the things that they're not showing. Those are the first things I would go after: the auto drops, the windows working. Uh, does the top function all the way? Do you need to push on anything to kind of help it along the way? How does the inside of the deck lid look? Um, I do assume it's a steel deck lid, but if this car did have any rust, you know, maybe it's a fiberglass deck lid. That's what guys are starting to use now because they can't find the deck lids. There's a lot of what ifs. So again, th this is, this looks like a great car and I really hope that it is. And I just want to give you guys kind of the, the breakdown on what I would look for if I was looking to uh, potentially go and, and, and buy this car. So again, 1965 Lincoln Continental Convertible, eBay listing review. If you haven't, please subscribe and check out Lincoln Attic Podcast, however you consume podcasts. I really appreciate it. Happy 2023. Let's keep this year going strong. We out of here. Peace. The Lincoln Continental is the big, roomy luxury car. It will be motordom symbol of quality. An automobile and a tradition.